chances are we've all been hit by that passage about you know robbing God and, and bringing his tithe and his contribution into the storehouse. The question is, is the concept of tithing really biblical in the New Testament? Is that really what we see? Here are seven things that your church is probably not telling you about tithing. Number one, tithes were actually given annually. Now this is going to sound strange to our ears because aren't we constantly told that we need to bring our tithes, if not every week, at least once a month. But in actual fact, if you look at Deuteronomy 14 verse 22 through to 26, what you actually see is that the people would bring their tithing year by year. Not only would the people bring their tithing year by year, according to verses 28 and 29, there was actually a special tithe that was taken every three years. Number two, tithes were never really currency. Tithes were actually food, like it was actually stuff that you could eat. So things that you grew, livestock, wine, fruit, grain, bread. These were the kinds of things that you would actually bring as your tithe and contribution. The only time you actually see currency mentioned within the context of the tithe is if you lived so far away from Jerusalem that you couldn't physically carry your tithe to the sea. In which case you're actually told to sell your tithe, take the money, carry it to Jerusalem and then buy whatever your appetite desires. Which brings us to number three. Everybody shared the tithe. According to Deuteronomy 12 and Deuteronomy 14, the tithe actually became part of a meal that you shared with the entire family. In the case of the tithe that came every three years, it was actually stored up in your town so that the Levites, the widows, the fatherless and sojourners could come and eat of it. There's actually a specific command about not eating in your tithe anywhere except the temple or the tabernacle. Now this obviously raises some questions because how often have you actually been permitted to share any of the tithe that you've given? When you bring your check or your cash and you drop it into the offering bucket, like, do they tend to give you change back? Do they ever like take their portion of it and then give you the rest and say, here, yeah, this is yours, like do what you will with it? Well, no. So is the tithe that we do today really indicative of what was in the Bible? And this takes us to number four. Four. If you work, you technically already tithe. The original tithe was actually for social welfare and for taking care of the needs of the Levites because they didn't have an inheritance in the land. God didn't actually give them their own land to work and till and raise livestock and all of that. So they would survive based on the contributions that the Israelites would bring to the tabernacle. Check out Numbers 18 verses 21 to 24 and Deuteronomy 14 verses 28 to 29. So if you were to compare it to today, chances are if you pay your taxes, a portion of your taxes go towards things like social welfare, like public services, the police or the fire department. At least here in the UK, we have the NHS, the National Health Service, so part of our taxes go towards our health service. And if you receive state benefits because you, you know, your earnings are under a certain threshold, the taxes are basically for that purpose, to help the needy. And this was exactly the same purpose for which the tithe was given. And this brings us to number five, the early church didn't actually do it. You won't find anywhere in the New Testament any references to tithes unless they're talking about something from the Old Testament. So for example, talking about how Levi technically tithed to Melchizedek because he was in the loins of Abraham. What the early church did do is that they would gather together a contribution to send to poor congregations elsewhere in Asia Minor or Mesopotamia. Their practice of giving was based upon the principle of tithing, but not the commandment. So basically they saw a need and and the people pulled their resources together or maybe sold what they had, brought the proceeds and then sent it off to go and help other people. But primarily, if you actually look in the epistles that Paul wrote, even that doesn't seem to be what they were actually doing. Because you have to remember, we're talking about primarily agrarian society here. So people are growing their own crops or they're raising livestock. And that was really where most of people's wealth actually was. It wasn't necessarily gonna be in currency. So the chances are that either people were literally sending food to these other places or they were taking their contributions, the produce of their land, exchanging it for currency so that that currency could then be sent to Jerusalem, for example, and then exchanged for food. And this brings us to number six. If the church you're in really wants to tithe, it should go to everybody. According to the New Testament, we, the people, are the temple 
and we're also the priesthood. And if you look in the Old Testament, primarily they went to the priesthood. So if everybody gathered together is the actual temple. And if we are all a nation of priests, then surely whatever everyone is bringing together as a tithe and offering should be going to everyone who needs it. Which then brings me to the final point. They are probably the ones robbing God. The context of Malachi chapter three and verses eight to 10 actually goes back a bit further. It goes back to second Chronicles 34, particularly verses four to 12. What was happening here was that King Hezekiah was trying to reinstitute all of the temple worship. He was commanding the people to bring the tithe and offering so that the Levites could do their work. What he then saw was that the people brought so much food that they needed somewhere to put it. So Hezekiah told them, build storehouses within the house of God so that we could bring all of the tithe and offering, all of this food into the storehouse. So what Malachi 3 verses 8 to 10 are really talking about is when the people aren't actually bringing the tithe and offering like they should. The Levites can't do their work because they have no food. And Nehemiah talks about this happening in his day. What he tells us is that because the people weren't bringing the tithe and offering, some of the Levites had actually left their work and had gone into the fields to basically grow food. And there was another guy who had set up a house for his friend within the storehouses in the temple. Nehemiah gets really angry about this. He kicks the guy out of the temple and he commands the people, you need to bring the tithes and offerings back to the temple so that the Levites can come back and do their work. So when God says in Malachi 3 verses 8 to 10, you are robbing me, what he means is that you are not providing for the needs of your brethren. If the tithe is given to provide for the needs of the priesthood, and if all we are a nation of priests, doesn't that imply that if we are giving anything like a tithe or an offering, it should be going towards the needy, people who are going hungry, people who maybe don't have a roof over their head. Now, I don't say any of this to put anyone in particular on blast. It's just simply to make the point that this is something that we should all be doing. And I don't even think it needs to be something that's necessarily formalized or institutionalized. We're all one body and we've been made one body so that we can have the same care and concern for one another. So if one person suffers, we all suffer. If one person rejoices, we we should all be able to rejoice together. And this really speaks to the heart of what was the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said that we would be known to the world by the love that we have for one another. He was speaking to believers. So we're meant to be known for how much we love one another, yet for the most part, we're known for how much we love money. And could that be because we've taken the original concept of the tithe and basically turned it on its head? We've taken the principle and heart of the law, which was love for your neighbor, and we've turned it into love for ourselves and our own need. This isn't to say that everyone is guilty of that because some people are genuinely giving because they believe it's the biblical thing to do. And yet what we're giving to is actually an institution or a building rather than a people because the temple is a people. So if tithes are going to the church, then tithes should be going to a people rather than a place. And if we truly love one another, then this should come pretty naturally to us. What person who sees his brother or his friend in need is not going to go and help them. So why don't we take back the tithe? And I'm not saying that people now go and literally start pulling money out of the offering basket, because you know, in, in most circumstances, that would be considered stealing. But what we should maybe be doing is taking the concept of the tithe and putting it back within its correct biblical context and that is the principle of giving to support those in need giving to help one another and you know what it may not even necessarily be all of those who have fallen on hard time if you know someone that runs a business and they're a believer why not invest in their business if you know someone who's trying to start up a t-shirt company why not you know invest in their t-shirt if you know someone who just so happens to be writing a book I mean you know, maybe pledge to their Kickstarter of course we talk about no one in particular the fact of the matter is that we as the body of Christ should be investing in one another so that we don't have to rely on the world system to provide for our needs. I believe that there's actually enough wealth and talent within the body of Christ that we could actually do some amazing things if we just pulled our resources together. Maybe at the same time, we could erase one another's debt. So it's something to consider. Grace and peace. If you're liking the content, don't forget to hit subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at V4Thoughts.